Today, more than two billion people live under oppressive rule. Freedom is in decline globally. In Venezuela, free media outlets are shut down. In China, the government controls the internet. In Russia, journalists are murdered. In Zimbabwe, people are denied fair elections. In Iran, citizens can be executed for simply expressing dissent. And in Saudi Arabia, it's illegal to practice minority religions. For more than 70 years, Freedom House has promoted democratic change and protected human rights around the world. With offices in more than a dozen countries, we continue to speak out against threats to democracy, support frontline activists, and empower citizens to assert their rights. We are committed to making a difference because everyone has a right to be free. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to the Freedom House Annual Awards Dinner. My name is Frank Sesno. It is my great honor and privilege to be with you this evening to serve as your MC. It is also my great honor and privilege to serve as the director of the School of Media and Public Affairs at the George Washington University, where we hope, we believe, we're teaching the very principles of freedom to the next generation of political communicators and journalists from the United States of America and around the world. As you may know, I have a long history uh, in the world of journalism at CNN, and as I was mentioning over, over a, a conversation here a moment ago, I started my career here in Washington at the Voice of America. So this sense of America's reach and, and the freedom for which it stands and for which, uh, w which people crave is something that is very near and dear to me. Well, tonight is about recognition. We meet here uh, this evening recognizing that there is incredible, widespread, and very disturbing unrest in so many places around the world right now. Last week, particularly tumultuous and tragic in the Middle East and in North Africa. And sadly, there will be more difficult weeks, tumultuous and tragic times in those weeks and months and years ahead as people around the world express and struggle uh, their desire for greater freedom dignity, and an end to the ruthless authoritarian regimes that prevail in just too many places. People around the world risk their lives every day for a say in their future, for an ability to participate in their democracy, and their uh, opportunity to shape their destiny, whether in Libya, Bahrain, Egypt, Latin America, Eurasia, China, you name it. So we recognize that this is a challenging time for those in the field of human rights, democracy, journalism. And that's the reason we're here tonight. Despite the tremendous and oftentimes dangerous struggle to transform brutal regimes into peaceful, progressive democracies, there are those who bra have bravely and passionately dedicated themselves to the cause. We're here tonight to recognize and celebrate the ongoing work of Freedom House and this evening's honorees, each of whom has made and continues to make meaningful, lasting contributions to the cause of freedom and human rights. It's especially meaningful for me because one of tonight's honorees, Senator Patrick Leahy, who's sitting over here to my left, and I go way back. We were freshmen together. Uh, different schools, but we were freshmen together. His was a school called the Senate. Mine was the school called a little tiny, dinky radio station in Springfield, Vermont. Um, and the thing that made that, those interviews amazing in the 1970s, just after Pat Leahy was elected, was that he took the time not only to talk to little dinky radio stations in Springfield, Vermont, but to connect the world back to his constituents in that wonderful state. To him and to our other honorees, congratulations. 
I'd like to begin by introducing two members of Freedom House's leadership, the Honorable William H. Taft and the Honorable Jeffrey Hirschberg. The first thing I'd like to do is thank uh, Frank for agreeing to MC this program and do it for his normal clergy rate, which is nothing. <laughs> and it's a, it's a thrill to have him participate in Freedom House's event. I would like to say something about Frank that is really quite extraordinary that I think people ought to take a look at if they get the chance. Putting aside all the other good works he does, Frank is keenly aware of the uh, high level of political discourse in this country, the lack of noise, and the education of the electorate, however you put that. And what he has done is he has created an interactive website called Face the Facts USA. And what he's done with this is he has taken a policy issue starting 100 days out from the election and every single day, he discusses another policy issue on that website, devoid of passion, devoid of rhetoric, de devoid of pejoratives. It is lucid, it is intelligent, and I commend it to you all. Face the Facts USA. I'm Jeff Hirschberg, and I'm uh, co-dinner chair tonight. And I'm Will Taft, chair of Freedom House Board of Trustees. Jeff and I want to thank all of the people who made tonight possible through their very hard work, their contributions, and dedicated service. You know, the Board of Trustees and the Dinner Committee reached out to a lot of people to make this possible tonight. And a lot of colleagues, a lot of friends, a lot of supporters, and we're delighted that you could make it. We've, I'd first like to thank Will Taft, the chairman of our board, for being part of this dinner committee. And I'd like the other members of the dinner committee, if they could, to please rise. Rebecca Hale, where are you? Paula Dobriansky, over there. Thank you, Paula. Jim Colby, Jim, you here? Lisa Nelson. Lisa, and Zainab al suwaz are you here? Thank you all. And I'd also like to thank my original co-chair for this event, Faith Morningstar, who could not be here with us tonight, primarily because her husband can't say no to any Democratic president of the United States. And he's off as ambassador to Azerbaijan, and she has followed him. So Faith, we thank you as well and look forward to your safe return. We also want to thank the other members of the Board of Trustees whose belief in the Freedom House mission and generous support enables the organization to grow and thrive and I hope that they will all please stand. Are they up? We can applaud them. <laughs> <laughs> and among those uh, members of the board, we would especially like to thank board member Susan Bennett, who made it possible for us to hold the event here again at this most extraordinary venue. Where is Susan? I don't know. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'd also like to thank the honorary co-chairs of our event, General Colin Powell and former Congresswoman Jane Harmon, who unfortunately aren't able to join us this evening uh, because of previous engagements. And we thank all of you for joining us tonight in support of Freedom House and to recognize the inspiring accomplishments of this year's award recipients. Finally, um, we want to express our gratitude to those generous donors in this room and out who have made Freedom House's work possible by attending this dinner and being so generous. And we are happy to recognize the following sponsors. They are Facebook, Kim and Judy Davis, 
Levi Strauss and Company, Skype, Visa and Lisa Nelson, the Northeast Maglev, Warburg Pincus and Ken Juster, Will Taft, the American Federation of Teachers and Tony Cortez, the Walt Disney Company, Google, Rebecca Hale, McLarity and Associates, and one whose uh, contribution came in uh, after the program was sent to the printer DLA, the law firm of DLA Piper, and Ambassador Mark Palmer and Dr. Shushma Palmer. Please give them a round of applause for their support. <laughs> And our final uh, duty tonight is to um, introduce a short tribute tape, which was made by Cheryl Sandberg, the Chief Operating Officer of Facebook, one of tonight's sponsors. Enjoy the evening. Good evening, everyone. My name is Cheryl Sandberg, and I'm Facebook's Chief Operating Officer. Let me begin by congratulating this evening's honorees, Abdul Hadi, Al Khawaja, and his daughters, Maryam and Zainab, Senator Patrick Leahy, and Levi Strauss and Company. Each of these awardees has made exceptional contributions to the cause of freedom. Their determined leadership has inspired millions of people around the world, and their brave deeds serve as examples for us all. At Facebook, our mission is to make the world more open and connected, and we have been delighted to see openness and connection enhance people's access to the rights and resources they deserve. We have also been humbled by the bravery of the people all around the world who have used Facebook to fight for their rights despite facing tremendous personal risks. This is the value of connection. Of course, the ability to connect is not something we can take for granted. There are barriers that stand in the way of moving towards a more open and connected world. Barriers are erected when governments become fearful that more connection means less control. Barriers are erected when regulators try to manage new technologies in ways that could stifle innovation and growth. And barriers are erected when countries decide that they want to restrict how people express themselves online. Of course, we all need to take steps to foster a culture of responsible and informed digital citizenship, but erecting barriers to connection is not the answer. Freedom House is fighting to ensure that these barriers are never built. Freedom House assists the brave people who fight for openness online and in the public square. And through its Freedom on the Net report, it shines a spotlight on governments that are seeking to restrict freedom of expression and freedom of association online. We're proud to support the work of Freedom House because Freedom House, like Facebook, is dedicated to promoting an open and connected world. I want to thank Freedom House for inviting us to be part of tonight's celebration, and I applaud tonight's award recipients and all of you who are fighting to advance freedom everywhere. Good evening, everyone. So before we break for dinner, and for scheduling reasons, we're going to bestow our first award here this evening. And to do so, I have the distinct honor of introducing the Honorable Jim Colby, who served 11 terms in the United States House of Representatives for Arizona's 8th Congressional District. While in Congress, he served for 20 years on the Appropriations Committee, was chair of the Subcommittee on Foreign Operations, Export Financing, and Related Programs. Mr. Colby is now a senior transatlantic fellow at the German Marshall Fund, where one of his areas of focus is the effectiveness of U.S. foreign assistance. So ladies and gentlemen, presenting this evening's first award, the Leadership Award, is the Honorable Jim Colby. Thank you, Frank. I should also <clears throat> add that I'm a, an advisor at uh, McClarty Associates, one of this evening's dinner sponsors. They wouldn't have me up here if I, if I didn't mention that here this <laughs> evening. Frank, thank you very much. And Frank mentioned, said early uh, a few moments ago that this evening was about recognitions and about some of the bad things that have happened around the world with the loss of freedom. But tonight we're going to hear about some good things, people that are still fighting and fighting every day and advancing the cause of freedom around the world. And it's my great privilege, and I mean that very sincerely, my privilege, to make this presentation tonight 
to Pat Leahy, Senator Pat Leahy, the senior senator from Vermont, a post that he has held for nearly 38 years. In that time, Senator Leahy has distinguished himself as a staunch defender of human rights all over the world and for all peoples, an ally for the less fortunate around the world, uh, and, and in this country as well. He is a true humanitarian. In 1997, Senator Leahy wrote a provision that became known as the Leahy Law or the Leahy Rule, a provision in the annual Foreign Assistance Bill, and it's been there ever since, that prevents the United States government from supplying arms to foreign military units that have clearly committed human rights violations. It's one of those things that becomes a benchmark each year when the Foreign Assistance Bill is considered on the floor and when the administration has to consider about releasing funds under that uh, legislation. Until that, until that legislation was adopted, the United States government provided military aid to governments that were routinely abusing the human rights of their own citizens. So with Senator Leahy's leadership, these practices have been changed, and some of this, I think, has pre been prevented. So it has certainly been a step in the right direction. Senator Leahy has been a leading voice in the U.S. Congress in support of a robust and a very consistent foreign assistance uh, program, even during a climate of widespread budget cuts. He knows from experience, as do I, because we've served in the same position in the House and in the Senate, he knows from experience that our foreign policy efforts, that our national security is enhanced by strong, targeted foreign assistance programs. I had the privilege when I was chairman for six years of the Foreign Assistance uh, Committee in the House of Representatives to have Pat Leahy as my counterpart on the Democratic side over in the, in the Senate. And I can tell you, he was always, always an extraordinarily thoughtful member of the committee and a either chairman or ranking member who always had the right kind of approach to things. And he made it possible for, for us to work in a bipartisan way to get bipartisan legislation, legislation passed. Senator Leahy has never been one to say, stay silent in the face of human rights abuses. After the Arab Spring Revolution in Egypt a year and a half ago, Senator Leahy, with great foresight, attached strong conditions dependent on democratic development to the one and a half billion dollars in assistance that the U.S. government provides annually to the Egyptian government. When the Egyptians raided and closed down the NGO offices that included that of Freedom House and NDI and IRI and some others, and they began prosecuting the American and the, uh, and the Egyptian staff that worked there. Pat Leahy spoke out forcefully against this action. When the Obama administration decided to waive the assistance conditions, it was Senator Leahy that once again raised his voice in support of democratic forces. Pat Leahy, has been an outspoken individual when it comes to speaking out against the abuses committed against people who try to exercise their rights of protest and of civil disobedience. He has been a outspoken when it comes to the activists in Bahrain and continues to draw attention to the ongoing U.S. relationship uh, uh, with the Bahrain military. Let me stop here for a moment and let's take just a little look here at why we are honoring him. You'll see this on the video for just a minute here. There's nobody I know of in Congress who has been a greater champion of human rights than Senator Leahy. He is a man with uh, kind of a gentle manner, but a spine of steel. When you meet him, he's all relaxed and low key. Uh, but when it comes to issues of human rights, um, he is so dogged, he is so fierce that nobody will say no to him. As a human rights champion, people think of him as an idealist. But the reason 
we work with Senator Leahy is because he's also a consummate pragmatist. He understands how to use the legislative process to make change. We have human rights and tolerance, transparent, accountable government, the rule of law. That's why I wrote the Leahy Amendment a decade and a half ago and it was passed with bipartisan support. The Leahy law has, has been really transformative in, in how the United States deals with abuse of security forces. There used to be a time when there were no consequences, when governments could do whatever the hell they wanted to do, and it was business as usual. Well, one of Senator Leahy's great legacies is that there's no more business as usual. And it's a great tribute to him that people sort of talk about this law um, as a noun and a verb, <laughs> not as a person anymore. It has taken on a life of its own. Senator Leahy's work has saved the lives of countless millions of people around the world. I mean, I, I look back, I'm, I'm working with him in Central America and El Salvador. He picked up the phone, he called the president of El Salvador, he called the U.S. Embassy, you know, he went down there himself and said, no, you can't do this. Here's Senator Leahy, after all these years, still focused on El Salvador because he wants them to get it right. When the Egyptian security forces arrest human rights defenders from Freedom House and other human rights organizations, Senator Leahy came up forcefully against uh, sending them more very assistance. In the wake of the Tahrir Square revolution, Senator Leahy succeeded in placing uh, real conditions on that money for the first time uh, in over 30 years. He's a hero, forceful, uh, eloquent, Batman. He is um, a, a thoughtful man, an idealistic man who is a citizen of the world in many, in, in many respects. He represents to me the best of our country. People around the world don't necessarily know that the reason why America is standing up for them is because one guy in the Senate made it happen when very few other people cared. Is they're working every single day to uh, improve the quality of human rights for people all around this world. So, ladies and gentlemen, pragmatist, idealist, there are few lawmakers who combine those two attributes with such grace and dignity and skill as Senator Pat Leahy, and it's my privilege to present the Leadership Award to the Senate's own Batman, Senator Pat Leahy. <laughs> Sit down. Thank you. Thank you. You know, to get that be presented by a dear friend like Jim Colby means a great deal to me. And, and I should tell you that Frank says and I really have known each other forever. He was four years old working at this radio station when he was inter uh, interviewing me, but it worked out very, very well. And, uh, you know, Jim is part of the, what we call a, a Vermont Republican, the old style that actually wanted to get things done. Uh, and we worked together. Jim, you and I, we'd make agreements on the foreign aid bill and others, and we knew we could take each other's word. Tim Reeser, who's here with me and would work at that, knew that um, uh, if we made an agreement, we would bring Democrats and Republicans together for the good of the country, which is really what we're supposed to do. We could trust each other. The, um, you may have noticed up here, if you look out, it's actually kind of a nice view, you see the light on the top of the Capitol, that means we're still in session. Now, being in session doesn't mean we're accomplishing anything, but uh, 
but we're having a great time doing it. And one of the reasons the Senate is in there, and I, I say this as an admirer of Freedom House, and I, I know this will never leak out of here, <laughs> but I admire you, and it is such an honor to be here, and I, I should tell you just for a moment why we're still in session. We're doing this because we have an amendment on the floor to cut off all aid to any country that has publicly disagreed with us. Wow, that will really get people on our side. <laughs> it means out goes aid to Egypt, Libya, Israel, most parts of Africa, anywhere where we might actually help build the kind of freedoms and the kind of a rule of law that we, everybody in this room agrees with, whether you're Republican or Democratic, whatever. It is the kind of knee-jerk reaction that we have got to get away from. And thank God Freedom House is here. And one of the reasons I stood up for you in the Egyptian crackdown is because we need people to stand up. We need people to say, we are committed to freedom. And if we suddenly say, if you disagree with us, we'll cut off any aid, any connection with you, what does that say about our commitment to freedom and freedom of speech? Now, I got to tell you, and I told Marcel, my wife, who had to go back home because of a, to Vermont because of a uh, health problem involving one of our children, that how pleased I was and how humbled I was to be recognized at the same time as Mr. Alkawacha. And I met uh, his daughter here. You know, this is an example of staying up for freedom. I can do it easily. I can stand on the Senate floor and speak about freedom and do it safely. He stood up, suffered torture, abuse, imprisonment, because he stood up for it. You know, we're concerned what's happening in Bahrain today, but it's courageous people like Mr. al Kawacha, countries around the world that we, we dedicate ourselves to this evening, but it's also what Freedom House has done for more than 70 years. Jim mentioned the Leahy Law, and others did. Now, when I wrote that, I had no idea what impact it would have, but I did know that we could no longer permit United States aid to foreign security forces, the abuse and murder innocent civilians. That's wrong. It contradicts everything that we stand for. And I am pleased that both Democratic and Republican administrations have supported it. It's not a Democratic or Republican idea. It's a Freedom House idea. It's an American idea. It's a human freedom idea. It is a human rights idea. And it doesn't make exceptions. It applies the same standard worldwide. A clear incentive for governments to hold abusive military and police officers accountable. I don't care whether human rights act activists are in Egypt, Russia, China, or any other country. They're persecuted for de uh, defending rights that we Americans take for granted. We ought to stand up for them. We ought to stand up for them. We know what our rights are. If other countries are to succeed in any form of democracy, they have to be able to stand up for their rights. We have a responsibility to support them. You know, Freedom House reminds us the denial of basic freedoms is everyone's concern, wherever it occurs. Sometime in the next couple of days, I'll be back at my farmhouse in Vermont. I will drive down a dirt road, dead end road. I will come into this house where my wife and I celebrated our honeymoon 50 years ago last month. I know that there are freedoms in Vermont. I know that my neighbor may disagree with me on some political things, but he and I will stand together in defending our freedoms. What you do, you defend those same freedoms worldwide. 
I salute you, and I can't tell you how honored I am to have this award. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy your meal.